Hey kiddos, it's Mrs. D on this lovely Friday afternoon. Um, I want to go over with you really quick just some stuff about stoichiometry. Um, yeah, it looks like the weirdest word ever. Stoichiometry is something that we use every single day and you don't even realize it. For example, I used stoichiometry last weekend when I made some pumpkin bread. I looked in my cabinet, I had two cans of pumpkin, so I had to figure out how um, many batches of pumpkin bread I could make with two cans of pumpkin. So I use stoichiometry. When I go to my salon person um, that may or may not color my hair, um, the the person, my, my hairdresser, actually uses stoichiometry to determine the amount of color that's needed to get my hair the color that I want. So we use stoichiometry all the time. You just don't realize that you're doing that. So here's some everyday stoichiometry examples. For example, if you are making a bike. I mean, who doesn't make a bike, you know? So two wheels and one frame actually makes one bike, and we know that. But if we had um, wanted to make five bikes, well, obviously, how many wheels are we going to need to make five bikes? Well, we're going to need 10 wheels to make five bikes. And how many frames are we going to need to make five bikes? Let me see what I'm writing here. 10 wheels. How many frames are we going to need? Well, obviously, we'll need five frames because it takes one frame to make one bike. So what if we go here and we say, okay, what if we only have six wheels? So if we only have six wheels, then we can only make three bikes total. But if we have four frames, we could make four bikes, but one bike's going to be without a wheel. So therefore, this right here, the six wheels, is going to be our limiting factor. That means we can only make that much because that's the smallest amount that we have that's necessary to make it. So for example, if I were making my pumpkin bread and I had two cans of pumpkin and in order for me to make two batches, for example, I would need four cans of pumpkin. Well, it doesn't matter how many eggs, flour, and everything else I have. If I only have two cans of pumpkin, I can only make one batch of pumpkin bread. Um, if you have, for example, 11 wheels and three frames. So if you have 11 wheels, you can make up to five bikes with that, but with three frames, you would only be able to make three bikes. So our limiting factor here is the number of frames that you have. So here's some other simple stoichiometry when you think about drops of water. So here's the recipe for water, of course. It's a chemical recipe. So we take hydrogen gas and we bubble oxygen gas into it. And it all sounds easy. This is not an easy process at all. We have to actually um, add some electricity and all that good stuff too. So it looks easy, this is not an easy real life process, but this recipe says we're gonna take two moles of hydrogen gas and react it with one mole of oxygen gas to produce two moles of water. Notice when I say two and one and two, those are the coefficients on my chemical formula. The balanced chemical equation gives us the recipe for how reactants combine to form products. So, um, there's different types of calculations for these chemical equations. You can go from moles directly to moles. You can go from moles to mass, or you have to go from mass to mass. And I'm going to show you some different um, potential ways for each of these. So let's take a look at this equation to make ammonia. And so my first, my equation here, let's go back and just read this equation. And it's balanced already. So you need to make sure your equation is balanced first. But I have one mole of ammonia gas plus, or nitrogen gas, plus three moles of hydrogen gas yields two moles of ammonia. So my question is, how many moles of hydrogen are needed to completely react with two moles of nitrogen? So what I have here is I want to identify my information that I have. My information that I have is I have two moles of nitrogen, and I want to know how many moles of hydrogen. So this is my need and this is my have, just like we did when we did the mole, the mole conversion problems. So we identify our have and our need. And we're going to start what, with what we have, because we always start with what we have, and convert to moles if necessary. In this case, it's not necessary because we're already in moles. It says two moles. Then we're going to use what's called the mole ratio to change substances. And that's when we use the coefficients in the chemical equation. Then we convert to the need if it's a unit other than moles. And in this case, it's not. So this is going to be actually a really simple equation. 
So I want to say, well, how many moles of hydrogen then? This is the same question. So again, our have is two moles of nitrogen. And our need is moles of hydrogen. And so what I'm going to do here then is I start with my have, which is two moles of nitrogen, times three moles of hydrogen to one mole of nitrogen. What I need to show here is right here. I don't mean to draw these extra lines here. But that circled area that I showed, that's my mole ratio. And that came directly from my chemical equation. So I have three moles of hydrogen in my chemical equation for every one mole of nitrogen. And I do not know why these lines are showing up <laughs> because the, of the um, coefficients in my equation. What if I have a problem like this where if I would read this problem, I would have two moles of potassium chlorate yields two moles of potassium chloride plus three moles of oxygen gas. My question is, how many moles of oxygen are produced by the decomposition of six moles of potassium chlorate? So I look again, six moles of potassium chlorate is my half, and moles of oxygen is my need. Sorry, I'm very sloppy today, is my need. And so what I do then is I same thing. I start with my half. We um, convert to moles. We use the mole ratio to change substances. That's the very important thing. That's why we use the chemical equation because it's the only way to go from one substance to another. And then we convert to need if it's a different other than moles. And it's not in this case. So here we are again. We have six moles of potassium chlorate to start. We're going to do our mole ratio, and our mole ratio comes from the coefficients in our equation. So for every two moles of potassium chlorate that you see right here, we have three moles of oxygen gas that we see right here. That's where the mole ratio came from. And because we end up with moles of oxygen, we don't need to convert to grams or anything. We can stop right there. Now, sometimes, though, we do need to convert um, within the problem. So in this case, we have a balanced equation of nitrogen gas plus three moles of hydrogen gas is going to yield two moles of ammonia. So again, we're going to identify our have and our need. So we're going to do all the same stuff that we've done before, identify our have and our need, start with have, convert to moles, mole ratio, convert to need. Okay, so let's take this one step at a time here. This was our have. This is the stuff that's given to us. And grams of ammonia is our need. Okay, so therefore we start with our have, which is 19.3 liters of, of nitrogen. And since it's liters of a gas, we're going to convert to moles using the molar volume of a gas, which is our 22.4 liters that we're used to. For every one mole of N2, notice we can cancel out liters now. Now we're at one mole of N2 and we're ready to change into a different substance. So to do that, we have to use our chemical equation to do our mole ratio. So we know there's one mole of nitrogen for every two moles of ammonia. So one mole of nitrogen goes in the bottom so we can cancel one mole of nitrogen from before for two moles of ammonia goes on top. Now, we need to know, though, grams of ammonia, not moles of ammonia. So therefore, we simply change it into grams. This is the molar mass of ammonia, and so we can cancel out moles. When we go to calculate this, you multiply everything across the top, everything across the bottom, and divide the two. Okay, so you're going to get 29.29 grams of ammonia. Here's another example. We're going to go grams to grams here. So we have in our equation, our have is 10 grams of potassium chloride and our need is grams of potassium chlorate, okay? So again, we've identified our have and our need and we go and we have, okay, here's our have, 10 grams of potassium chloride. We're gonna convert to moles using the molar mass of potassium chloride. Once we get to moles of potassium chloride, we're going to use our mole ratio. According to our equation, we have two moles of potassium chloride. 
when we have two moles of potassium chlorate. So we have our mole ratio, everything's starting to cancel. Moles of KCl, moles of KCl. We convert using our molar mass of KClO3. And then we have 132.7 grams. So we're in grams of KClO3. That's our need, so that tells us we need to calculate. So we would take 10 times 1 times 2 times 132.7 equals divided by the quantity of 74.6 times 2 times 1. And you're going to get 17.8 grams of potassium chlorate. So you guys, you can do this. I'm going to make another quick video of just some example problems so you can see. But stoichiometry, it's just a combination of chemical reactions with mole conversions. Take it step by step and you're going to be just fine. Take care, you guys.